no-brainer, probably contractually and creatively, was Star Trek uh, Two or whatever we're going to call it. You've completed filming on that one, and I know you can't say much at all. But I, I am curious. I mean, obviously, Kirk in that first film had a tremendous arc mm -hmm. for that character. Do you have as much kind of like, is there as much of an A to Z or A to B oh kind god. of thing for him in this one? Oh my god! I mean, um, the, yeah, their their scripts are. It's deceivingly. Um, There's so much happening in their script. Uh, I mean, I just can't say much of anything, but it's... They write... Uh, you know, they come from TV lands. So right. All of them do. J.J. and Bob and Alex and Damon. They've worked together in the highest pressure situation television for years. So that, that machine is well-oiled. Uh, what you also get in that circumstance is it's a constantly evolving right. beast. The script, the material how it's going to look, how JJ's going to shoot it. It is There's nothing set in stone, which is tremendously frightening, but also extremely exhilarating, especially when it's like having... Um, it's like a finely tuned race car. It's like they just know how to do it. Um, and in this kind of constant evolution, the script that they had written just got better and better, and I think what they're so good at is this kind of mythic reinvention. They were very good at writing myth. And these characters, I think, what people will find, I hope, with everybody, is that these characters go on mythic arcs. It's just like big... It's all about growing up. And these are young men and young women. And they are not the, they are not the crew that we know from the series. And they are developing into that. And that is a... That it takes a, a lot, you know, it's a long way to go there. So, so just because he ended that first film in the the captain's uniform doesn't mean that the start. It's like he uh, settled yeah. in that you know at all. And I think it goes for everybody. It's it's learning what it means to be an adult. It's learning what it means to be a leader of men. It lear it's learning what it is about these people that you love. It's very much like the film People Like Us too. It's learning how to deal with people's differences, their faults, the things that piss you off, make you mad, and have hurt you, and it's learning how to, the only control you have over that is how you're going to view it, how you're going to, if you're, if you are going to accept it, and I think that's a huge part of the film, and I think hopefully, you know, not going to will be, uh, will work for people. And what we're obviously very excited to see Benedict added to the cast, and from all accounts, he knocked it out of the park in this performance. I mean, give me a sense of, I mean, we know he's a bad guy in it, did you get to kind of play mano a mano him? Is this is there a very much a Kirk, whatever he is, kind of relationship that's very satisfying for you and will be satisfying to the audience? Yeah, I mean, again, every time you ask me a, a track question, I have to frame my answer in a way that I don't want to get a <laughs> no, phone get call it. late at night. <laughs> um, you know, again, it is structured so that the antagonist is like, brings out all of the qualities in Kirk that need, that need to happen in order for Kirk to grow. I know that is the... No, I get it. Way <laughs> But, I mean, as you know from Benedict just watching him, I mean, you know, and I've said it before, is vocally he's fascinating. He's got this deep, resonant voice. Um, he's got such a... He's a fascinating face. He's just this, like... Uh, he's a lovely guy and super... Just very smart. And what yeah. you want behind, I think, um, a bad guy in any film is intelligence. And you want to see something firing in his brain so he's not just a, you know... A right. Fang drip, you know, blood dripping from the fangs, kind of bad guy. Benedict brings that those those kind of smarts.